In this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you the different ways of painting Necron bodies, coloured glowing effects, and finish up by showing you how to paint some of the many dynasties. My name's Michael, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you everything you need to know how to paint Necrons. I'll put the brushes and paints I use in this tutorial in the description below, as well as putting them on the screen when I use them. If you enjoy my content, please give this video a like and let me know in the comments below. And if you want to help support what I do, you can become a channel member or you can join my Patreon, which I'll also link in the description. I really appreciate any help and support and it goes a long way to growing the channel and allows me to keep improving the content I create for you. And I massively appreciate the continued support from these amazing people as well. When building your Necrons, I actually find it easier just to fully assemble them rather than in sub-assemblies, just because of how delicate some of the parts can be and how they all attach to each other. I also chose to undercoat everything using Chaos Black Spray for this tutorial, but you could use Lead Voucher or Rune Lord Brass as well, depending on your dynasty. So what I'm going to be doing is focusing on the main dynasty that you see on all the boxes, and then along with that throughout the video, I'll be showing you alternative ways to paint your Necrons, so hopefully by the end of this tutorial, you should be able to paint all the different kinds of dynasties that there are. Through this tutorial I'll be showing you all the techniques and steps that you'll need to get your Necrons painted and to make it easier to follow along I'll be splitting the video up into different sections. In the first part of this tutorial I'm going to go through the different ways you can paint your Necron bodies and show you how you can make them a little more interesting. Before we get to the main colour for the body, Necrons all have a lot of details, joints and gizmos under their main body sections. So I want to tackle this first so we don't have to worry about it once we've painted everything else. The best way and quickest way to paint these details is with a dry brush. And if you've never dry brushed before, all you need to do is to load up your bristles with your paint and remove as much of the paint as you can on some kitchen paper. And when you dry brush in, you want to keep your brush moving pretty quickly against the details. What's happening is the paint is being deposited right on the edges and raised areas and is not being allowed to get into any of the shallower details. So now you know the technique, let's use some lead voucher to dry brush our Necrons. Now that's done, let's get a base colour down and the colour we want to use for our Zarakar Necron is Rune Lord Brass. And whenever I'm painting, it's always a good idea to thin your paint first of all, and I find using an equal amount of water does the trick. As well, try not to go over anywhere you've already painted to prevent creating any unwanted texture whilst the paint is still drying. When the paint is dry, you'll see because we thin the paint, it doesn't cover very well. So we want to be painting multiple layers to build up to a solid colour, which we can then work from. You can paint your Necrons in any colour you want, it doesn't have to be Rune Lord Brass, you may instead want a classic silver look using Iron Hand Steel, or even a darker tone using Iron Warriors for example. You may also want to have other colours on your Necron as well, that we want to get painted like these decorative details with Retributor Armour and Iron Hand Steel for parts of the gun. Whatever colour you do choose, it's a good idea to get all these different metallic colours painted now, so we can start to add definition and interest using a wash. The wash I'm using is Reichland Flesh Shade and this wants to be applied to all the areas we just painted the brass colour. And when applying a wash or shade, you want to use enough to cover the area comfortably to help prevent the shade pulling up too much in areas. But if that does happen, then you can just use your brush to soak up the excess you don't want and then make sure to let that fully dry before moving on to the next step. Again, you can use different coloured shades and you can see just by changing the colour you get a different tone even though they're used over the same base colour. Now the shade is dried, we're starting to get a more interesting look to the armour, rather than it just being flat, but it's still not enough. Let's choose a different colour shade like Karenberg Crimson and apply this to the areas of the body, focusing more towards one end of a section of the body. You can get some really cool looking Necrons doing this and picking different shades that work really well together. So I thought painting Necrons was going to be pretty easy and straightforward, but we've actually gone through quite a lot in the first section of this tutorial. But there is still one more thing that I do want to show you and that's highlighting. When highlighting, I like to keep my good brush separate so I know it's got a good tip on it for the job when I need it. 
I don't thin the paint down as much either because we want a strong colour without having to do multiple passes like we would if we were layering. It's also a good idea to remove some of the paint on some kitchen paper to give us better control and to prevent those thick blobby lines. And when you feel ready, go around the miniature using Stomaho Silver and highlight any edges and details you want to be more visible. Highlighting does take some time to do, but it's always worth doing. But if you aren't that confident highlighting, you can change this step to a dry brush using Stomaho Silver as well. Now we've gone over how to paint Necron bodies, you want to know how to paint their weapons next. I'm now going to show you the different steps to painting your Necron weapons including alternative energy colours. Before we get started on painting the green energy colour, we're going to need to paint the weapon casings first. And the first colour we're going to use is a bad and black for the main base colour. I now want to show you how to do a two stage highlight which works really well for those harder edges. The first highlight is going to be a chunky highlight using Stegodon scale green and this wants to be quite a thick line so it's still visible once we apply our second edge highlight. You want to go around painting this highlight along all the edges and around details and I'm almost using the side of my brush for this and you'll see this highlight helps define all those shapes. Next is an edge highlight using Femrisian Grey to emphasise all those edges really making the details pop out. And to make this easier you can use the side of your brush and run it along an edge to create the highlight. For the places you can't do this, just take your time and paint a thin line along an edge you want to highlight. Now for the fun part and what makes Necrons look like Necrons, and that's the energy glow. And like the weapon casings, we can use Caliban Green to paint a chunky highlight where we want that glow effect on the weapon as well as any pipes and tubes you can see. And then use some warpstone glow to continue to build up the colour next and we're going to paint a thinner line within the Caliban green. And for the tubes, just paint a line along the centre of them. Next paint an edge highlight with some moot green to get that glow effect. And you want to also use the moot green to paint a thin line along the pipes. Finish up with a spot highlight using dawn yellow and all you really need to do is paint a small dot on all the corners and along the thin line you painted on the tubes. Following the same steps for our green energy, you can actually paint all kinds of different colours. So for a blue energy, I'll use Cantor Blue, Teclis Blue and Blue Horror. For an orange energy, I'll use Corn Red, Evil Sun Scarlet and Fire Dragon Bright. So in this tutorial, I really want to help you understand that when you are painting Necrons, no matter kind of what dynasty you want to paint, all the steps and techniques are really going to be the same. It's just a case of changing out the colour that you want to use. So really that's just up to you. With the all important lesson on painting energy glow out of the way, let's take a look at how you can go about painting some of the different dynasties next. The first dynasty you see on all the boxes is Zerakhan. And for the armour plate, start off by painting these with Canoptech Alloy. Now shade these areas with Xerophin Sapia. Bring the colour back up to the Canoptech Alloy, leaving some of the shaded areas still visible in the shallower details. Finish with the highlight of Stormhouse Silver. If you want to paint any white decorative stripes, then use some Corex White. Then apply some Apothecary White Contrast. And finally use Ulthwin Grey for your highlight. For the Nihilac Dynasty, let's paint the head first of all using Retributor Armour, then give this a wash using some Reichland Flesh Shade, and finishing up with the Stormhouse Silver Highlight. For the main colour, let's start with some Sotek Green, and give this a wash using Norn Oil, paint a chunky highlight using Zybrite Green, and then Gauss Blaster Green for an edge highlight. For the Novak Dynasty, for any red panels, start with some Evil Sun Scarlet. Paint a chunky highlight with some Wild Rider Red. A Fire Dragon Bright can be used for an edge highlight. For the classic Sotek Dynasty. Oh, it's done. And for the Thok Dynasty. You can paint the black in an alternative way to the guns using Eshin Grey as a chunky highlight and Dawnstone for your edge highlight. 
With all the different ways I've shown you how to paint Necrons in this tutorial, you should be able to paint any of the main dynasties, and I hope I've been able to give you the confidence and knowledge to go away and paint your own. Make sure to check out all the other tutorials and videos on my channel, because there's lots of information in them to help you pretty much paint anything at this point. You can also support me at Patreon, which makes a massive difference in helping me make these tutorials. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content, and I'll see you in the next video.